Thanks for joining us at Right on Replicas, where we bring you the best scale model kit reviews on the planet. This review covers the re-release of the Mac DM600 tractor by Round 2 under the MPC brand. It's a skill level 3 kit in 125th scale. The kit includes over 275 parts molded in white, black, chrome, clear, and clear red. There's vinyl tires and some tubing too. The kit itself has seen multiple releases since the 60s and the DM series was a construction use tractor not an over the road tractor so the decals included here uh, really aren't accurate and I'll show you how I made my own in order to make it more correct. Now the overall construction is straightforward and the build goes together well. Take your time, test fit all the parts and it starts with the chassis and works up uh, the rig from the bottom. Now the motor is nicely detailed but I had to strip some of the chrome because it's a work truck. In interior assembly is simple uh, as a day cab only and just has seats and a dash with the shifters. Uh, but the cab is a one piece unit with a separate hood which helps with painting. And you do get some options to build this up as a nice construction truck. Overall dimensions are length 10 and a quarter inches, width 4 inches and height 5 inches. Here are the decals for this kit. As you can see, they're very colorful and the registry is good. I strongly recommend using some decal setting solution to make it fit those contours. But as always, use the manufacturer's safety and use guidelines when using any of the products mentioned here in the review for your own protection. For most of the construction, I use Model Master liquid cement and sometimes a slow setting tube glue. But other adhesives are used too for strength like super glue and white glue for clear parts. Mostly the paints are Tamiya acrylic bottle paints that are shot through an airbrush or rattle can paints that can be used for things like primers. As I mentioned earlier the decals for this kit are for over the road trucks and the DM series was basically a construction utilitarian type vehicle. So in order to make an accurate model with mine I decided to make my own decals including the side logos and the plates. Um, I just went to the internet, looked for uh, something that was appropriate, printed it out with an inkjet printer, and then sized it up on some uh, ink on some uh, decal paper that's available from hobby shops, and printed them out and and uh, give them an overcoat of uh, Krylon Crystal Clear to keep them intact. Then I cut them out for application as decals on my model. Most of the chassis parts were molded in black, so I decided to give them a medium gray uh, coat of primer to make them easier to detail and paint. Also, as a cautionary note, the rear suspension is built in a number of steps in the instructions, but painted as a unit, so build steps 1 through 4, except for adding the tires and paint the completed subassemblies. Then we'll add the tires and complete the units. We'll start with the suspension and axles. Assemble the axle halves and the spring halves and attach a spring to the axle with a retainer on both ends. Assemble and insert the crossbar without glue and attach the other spring. Then assemble the transfer cases and attach them in the proper locations. Install the drive shaft with the U-joint and the short pin. Soak the air brake parts in and the outer rims in some bleach to remove the chrome. Then assemble the inner rims by inserting the hub into the rear rim and glue the midsection with the deep well out and add the outer rim. Then assemble and install the air brakes. Make four of these units and put the, place them onto the axles. Now paint the entire subassembly, uh, the whole unit, flat black. Another issue with this kit is that you'll find that the supplied tires are strictly for an over the road unit. So I decided to add some aftermarket parts from Double Take Replicas for a heavy duty uh, and more aggressive drive tire that would be used on a construction uh, service unit. Slide the tires over the rims and into place. Then add the chrome hub covers and the chrome crossbar end caps. The chassis assembly is steps 5 through 11 in the instructions and we'll be doing this prior to paint. So prepare the parts for assembly by gathering these parts and then the leaf springs are assembled, the steering box is attached and on the front suspension the spindles and the tie rod is attached. 
and the stabilizer bar is then assembled. Prior to using the trunnions, uh, note that you'll be cutting the tabs off here at the cut line where the red arrows indicate. Again for authenticity, I decided to remove the chrome from these parts, the tanks in the exhaust, by placing them in a bleach bath. Then, when that's dried, assemble all the parts to prepare them for final assembly and paint. On the chassis rails attach the tail bar, the stabilizer bar center supports, motor mounts, the front motor mount, and add the leaf springs, steering box left uh, horn brace and the body brace, the steering arm the tank support, front, sus front suspension, body mount, trunnions, tank mount, and assembled battery boxes and the rear fender braces and air tanks. Then assemble the fuel tanks and the exhaust. Now paint the fuel tanks and the exhaust aluminum and then paint the chassis assembly flat black and attach the fuel tanks and exhaust to that. Now add the chrome steps to the frame and the fuel fillers then pop the drive shaft loose and install the suspension. Then reattach the drive shaft and glue the suspension into place. Next we'll gather these pieces to assemble the motor. Now assemble the block, the oil pan, the head, front cover, the valve covers, the cover link hose, the water pump, filler tube, pump, transmission end, and oil filter. And paint this a tan gold color. Now the intake, exhaust, and water manifolds are steel. The fan belt and the generator are flat black as is the starter and the frame mounts. The water in the turbine hoses are aluminum and the turbine is left chrome. Now install the manifold, generator, coil, fan and belt and then add the water and intake manifolds and the starter. Add the inlet pipes and the turbine and then add the frame mounts. Now get out the parts to work on the front end. Assemble the rims and add the brake boosters and paint those units flat black. Add the tires to the rims, the drive shaft and the U-joint with the long pin is then assembled and painted flat black and install the motor and install the drive shaft into place at back end. Then add the rims and tires into place. Assemble the exhaust tube and paint it steel color installing it from the motor to the muffler. Then paint the spring brace, steering pin and radiator hose flat black and install those into place. And here is what your rolling chassis will look like at this point in the build. It's a great framework for the rest of the construction and has a little tougher stance with the taller heavy wheels. To give you a, a better view of the look here, this is the front suspension close up and here is the rear suspension uh, so that you can check your alignments. Now we'll get these body pieces out and start prepping it by assembling the cab parts and the hood parts. Under the hood add the fender wells and the outer fender. Then on the cab Add the passenger side fender inner and the air vent and the side step indent dent plate. An optional AC unit and vent can be installed on the roof if you choose to do that. Now spray the body parts with a good quality primer to prep the body for main color. Wet sand the body with a fine grit sandpaper and rinse clean. Now paint the body with your choice of colors. I used a standard fleet white, just a regular uh, white can of paint here, uh, but the process is the same no matter what color you use. Paint your base color and let it cure fully before moving on. Now it's time to decal the body. And as I mentioned, I made my own, but you can certainly use the ones in the kit. Um, but I um, printed them out and, pay and put them on to the body side uh, doors, etc. And then uh, I used some of that setting solution. Uh, that they have available to make sure that it sticks and conforms to any contours on the body. Get out the parts for the radiator and paint them flat black with the front grill area uh, an aluminum color. To make the headlights look a little more realistic I put some Elmer's white glue on the headlights uh, and it kind of creates a lens look to them that makes them look better. To make the window glass look clearer and crisper I always dip it in some pledge floor care uh, finish and after it wicked off and dried it actually looks much better improves the look of that so then I installed the glass into the um, uh, cab using some white glue and I also installed the uh, AC controls in the interior roof now I'll grab these parts to uh, 
add them to the cab and install the breather to the cab and use some super glue for this assembly um, then assemble the breather halves add the cover uh, and install the upper and lower mirror mounts and the mirror bar then install the mirror and attach this unit to the cab then add the breather mount add the Mac dog and door handle to the door add the grab bar to the cab pull these pieces out of the kit to start the interior then attach the doghouse and install the pedals. Paint the interior tub flat black. Assemble the passenger seat in the back. And then the passenger seat bottom and the brace are flat black too. Assemble the driver's seat in back and assemble the seat springs, base and support and paint those flat black. The seats are kind of a charcoal black and then the shifter knobs and bases are black and all three are installed. So assemble the seats and install them too. Assemble the steering wheel to the column and paint that flat black and gather these parts for the dash. The pedal is attached to the dash and that's, uh, that's all flat black. Then the instruments are white with some black and there's some chrome trim and some knobs. And you could just use a little silver uh, to make that look like chrome trim. Now install the dash into the places provided for it in the interior tub. Turn the tub over and glue that into place into the cab. Now glue the cab assembly onto the chassis and we'll grab these parts out to add to the cab. Attach the mirror frame and the mirror to the cab. Then attach the Mac Dog, the DM600 logo and door handle. Add the grab bar. Paint the lenses on the running lights. Turn signal yellow and install them on the cab roof. And assemble and attach the horns. Paint the AC grill steel color and install it. And then paint the wiper blades flat black and install the wipers. Paint the steering linkage and install that. Now grab these parts and paint the support the frame horn and the hooks flat black. Assemble and paint the air tube flat black. Then install the air tube to the turbine and the cab. And install the radiator and support. Now the uh, support isn't shown here but it needs to be installed. Now we'll continue the assembly and add the emblems to the hood. The MAC letters and the MAC emblems are on the front and the sides. The dog is in the center of the hood and the large and small markers are installed and the up insides are painted turn signal yellow. The turn signals are inserted into each side painted turn signal yellow as well. Now we'll be doing some test fitting to add the hooks to the frame uh, horn on the truck and also the one that we just painted and slide the hood pins into the hole in the existing frame horn and glue the other frame horn into place holding the hood onto the truck so that it opens properly. In keeping with my construction uh, build I decided to paint the bumper and the push bar uh, flat black. So uh, dechrome the uh, push bar and paint those units flat black and paint uh, and then install that on the frame horn ends and install the hood locks on the hood. We're nearing the end of construction so gather the parts for final assembly for the rear fenders and the fifth wheel. Assemble the fenders and the mud flaps and paint them flat black. Assemble the carriage with the fifth wheel mount and then paint the fifth wheel mount and carriage assembly flat black. Install the fenders in the carriage adding the fifth wheel to the mount. Then insert the tail light lenses into the housing with some white glue and install them in the rear panel. Add the license plate tag and you're just about done. All there is left to do is examine the parts that are left over and make sure you didn't forget any. Then depending on your build you're going to have some extra parts left and there will be some for the DM800 kit that were carried over into this kit that weren't used as well. There's no question uh, this kit comes from the 60's and molding technology was not nearly as good as it is now. Uh, the kit's always been a popular build though and even though it's not exactly correct for the versions that it's packaged under um, they can always be modified to make them whatever you like. Now the overall fit and finish it's uh, on par for an MPC older kit and but it does take some time to perfect it because you'll need to do a little work here and there. The chassis had a bit of a twist and uh, in the end that didn't really uh, prove to be too bad because the cab did fit well and the hood hood fit was really good so uh, everything kind of went into place properly uh, but this is an older mold and you will probably find some warpage and you'll have to fix some issues like flash and 
things of that nature. Um, this is a standard construction level truck, however, so I, I decided to modify it and show you how to do that uh, if you want to, but uh, there is no problem with building it however you would like. Uh, I did remove some of the chrome from the parts because uh, fleet trucks typically don't have that much chrome, but I, I love the fact that round two is continuing to uh, bring these back out for us to build because these old models are great and the subject matter uh, really brings back some nostalgia. So build this one with pride. We hope you like this premium quality step-by-step -step review and so that you don't miss any more please subscribe to our YouTube channel which you can find us on Facebook and also at our website www.writeonreplicas.com. Thanks!